Cheryl, this all sounds like a great math problem. What force was applied to a backside <laughs> hitting the ground? It would be your weight and then boof, do the how high you jumped up, right? How, from what elevation were you starting off at? <laughs> and you know, do your kinetic potential energy, right? It would be this, right? It would be here, let's do a quick, quick little kinetic potential energy, right? So this is the road. This is the ground. Cheryl is walking. <laughs> I would, Cheryl, I'm sorry. I'm putting you in a skirt. <laughs> Cheryl is walking this way. I, I, I twisted too fast and I had, I couldn't, I didn't want to erase it. Okay. Cheryl is walking this way. She goes, uh, whoop, legs kick up. And now she's like this. Ah! This is... That's her height, right? Now, potential energy you would have to start off with, right? Potential energy would be... Uh, energy... Uh, potential is uh, MGH. MGH. Pretty sure it's MGH, <laughs> right? First time chat. <laughs> Rob Luxer, hello, hello. So, mass times gravity times the height. So, I have no idea how much Cheryl weighs. <laughs> I doubt if Cheryl's gonna tell us how much she weighs. I don't mind the skirt, but I, but I, snow in snow, I'm probably just a, a long, long parka, yeah, for sure. And long parka, fantastic. Parkas have like little fluffy goose feathers in here. So they'll pad, pad your bum, right? Okay, that's a lot of forward motion. That's a lot of forward. She was running. She was running. So whatever Cheryl's mass is, let's assume general mass. And you're going to do this in kilograms, uh, the units here. Let's write down the units for this. The units for this would be kilograms. We're going to go with SI units. Gravity would be meters per second square, and height would be in meters. Okay. So let's assume they jump up one meter, one and a half meter. <laughs> one and a half meter. So the mass, if we're going to do kilograms, let's take average mass that, you know, for male anyway. Uh, because I know my mass in kilograms, basically, right? So my mass would be uh, 75 kilograms, 75, 80 kilograms, 75, 80 kilograms, right? Let's go 80 kilograms, right? Times gravity, which is 9.8, okay, meters per second squared. And the height would be one and a half meters, 1.5 meters. So let's assume that's a 10. We can approximate this. 1.5 times 8 is 120. 120 times 10 is 1,200. 1,200 uh, energy would be joules. Energy is joules. Man, I haven't done this physics for a while, right? 65. 65 kilograms? No. 65 is, uh, what would that be in pounds? 65 kilograms would be uh, 201 pounds. Uh, 65 kilograms would be around 160 pounds i think right yeah so 1200 joules um momentum momentum would be wow well, momentum we can't figure out we need to figure out the speed first 143 pounds wow 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 you're at 97 kilograms cool cool so 65 uh, what do you call it? Kilograms is 143 pounds. Shoot, Nightbot, Nightbot, Nightbot says, Nightbot says, Rob Luxer, Rob Luxer, Nightbot says, Free Assange, Free Assange, Free Assange. Julian Assange is a publisher and journalist that has been crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity. For more information, see wikileaks.org, defend.wikileaks.org. Or our Julian Assange on WikiLeaks playlist on Sensor 2. Now check this out. Right now, that would be the beginning stages of our system in play, right? So 
Cheryl would have this much energy in her, right? There would be zero uh, velocity, right? So her kinetic energy, energy kinetic, energy kinetic would be zero. Okay. Now, in physics, what we know, <laughs> it's okay, Elder God, <laughs> nice job. In physics, what we know is we have to have conservation of energy, right? So let me erase this. Might as well take this a little bit further than just the potential energy that Cheryl has, right? I'll take it as far as I remember the formulas, right? So at the initial system, initial condition, initial, uh, there's the total energy in the system is going to be energy potential plus energy, oops, energy kinetic, E kinetic, E kinetic. So energy potential for Cheryl would be 1,200 joules, I think it's joules, man, plus zero, all right? We'll kill the units just in case. So 1,200 plus zero because she has zero kinetic energy. At the bottom here, when Cheryl hits the ground, whap, right? She's going to have zero um, potential energy, but she's going to hit the ground at a certain speed, right? First time chat, Z, Zypho, Diddy, love science, always been a passion, uh, always been a passion, this physics. Yeah, physics is amazing, right? Uh, the root of it being mathematics, of course, right? So initial condition is this. Final condition, kinetic uh, potential energy is zero because she's not at any height, right? Potential energy is mgh, but if her height is zero, this is our zero, the ground, right? Well, anything, whatever the mass is, times whatever gravity is, which is 9.8, times zero is just zero. So her potential energy is going to be whatever the potential energy which is zero and she's going to have a kinetic energy and kinetic energy k kinetic energy kinetic is one half mv squared right should be unless uh yeah one half mv squared help message if the radius uh, <laughs> I understand. <laughs> this is from our last yesterday's. What is the volume of the uh, bearing beneath the H show? We definitely have to allow that. That links up to our previous thing, right? So one half mv squared. So we have to figure out what her velocity is going to be, right? And this, right? This has to be. Um, zero plus one half mv squared, right? We don't know what her velocity is going to be, right? We know what, what her mass is or what my mass is, 80 kilograms, right? So what's going to happen is in physics, you got conservation of energy. Energy initial must equal energy final. So energy initial must equal energy final. Energy initial is 1,200. Energy final is 1 half mv squared. Now, the m usually, not usually, but sometimes when you do this, you, you don't plug in the numbers right away. You leave, leave it as a formula because the mass is going to kill the mass, right? On this side. This side is mgh, right? The m is going to kill the m. But let's put it in, right? So this is going to be 1,200 is equal to 1 half. 80 v squared goes 40 times divided by 40 divided by 40 zero kills zero 120 divided by 4 is 30 v squared bring this here so velocity is going to be the square root of 30 meters per second okay that's how fast she's going to be hitting the ground right what is that in kilometers per hour should we do conversion to kilometers per hour so we get a feel for how fast this is right let's do convert it to kilometers per hour okay and then we'll figure out the momentum right well, momentum is uh momentum is mv right i'm always calling an ambulance for sure 
<laughs> I'm already calling that the lunch shit. So square root of 30, right? Let's here, we'll leave it a square root of 30. So square root of 30 meters per second, okay, hitting the ground. We want to convert this to um, kilometers per hour just to get a visual of how fast that is. So if we're going to convert anything to from meters per second to kilometers per hour, kilometers per hour, right? What you need to do is you got to get rid of the seconds here. So you put seconds here and seconds is a quick jump to minutes, right? So seconds, we're going to convert to minutes. And the conversion rate there is one minute is 60 seconds. But we want hours in the bottom. So hours, we're going to put minutes here. And there's minutes is a direct conversion to hours. So we're going to put hours here. So one hour is 60 minutes, right? So seconds kills seconds. Minutes kills minutes. We've got hours in the bottom, which is what we needed, right? And then what we want, we want to convert meters to kilometers because we want kilometers in the top so what you do is you put meters in the bottom meters is a direct conversion to kilometers you put kilometers here and one kilometer is a thousand meters right and this conversion if you do this multiplication square root of 30 times 60 times 60 divided by a thousand will convert it to kilometers per hour so let's kill off the zeros first. One zero kills one zero. One zero kills one zero. Two goes into this five times. Two goes into this three times. Three times six is 18. It's going to be, here, we'll write it down here. Square root of 30 times 18 divided by five, right? Let's just do this with a calculator. Oh, you're missing the little bit of bottom here. Let me make this five so you see it. Let's make it bigger so you actually see the five. Five, right? So let's punch this into a calculator. What do we get? Uh, 30 square root times 18, boing, divided by five. So that's 98.6 divided by five, which is just basically going to be 20. Right? So 19.7. Okay. So 19. 0.7 kilometers per hour which is basically 20 kilometers per hour okay 20 kilometers per hour so if you want to get a feel of how hard Cheryl is going to hit the ground just imagine someone standing and a car driving at 20 kilometers per hour hits them boom right now 20 kilometers per hour doesn't seem that fast but when you have a force solid force hitting you at 20 kilometers per hour where the force doesn't move and you're the only thing that's going to be moving because their weight is infinite compared to yours and the ground weights is infinite compared to Cheryl's weight okay like coming off a fast bike like coming off a fast bike but you're not rolling right you wouldn't be rolling you wouldn't be um what do you call it slowing down your impact in any way right and there's you're hitting uh coming off a fast bike not hitting the ground but jumping in the air and hitting a solid wall boom <laughs> right because everybody's wiped out on a bike when you wipe out on a bike you could wipe out sometimes you're going really fast but when you wipe out the ground is on on the ground and you can roll and you're not going into a wall right uh cheryl i had a bruise that matched the math i'm <laughs> not thinking it's time to swap <laughs> yak tracks for full crampons <laughs> I have no idea what those are, but okay. <laughs> Pond, we have a formula for how long it takes to clear snow from the highway in the UK. It's roughly Canada's time 
taken for the same task multiplied by 50 plus traffic delays from from school moms crashing their cars <laughs> hilarious and that's because the uk doesn't get as much snow as canada right not even close oh my god i have come off a fast bike it's like hitting a wall if you are uh, tossed yeah if you're tossed yeah but man pff, hard as far as the momentum of this as far as the momentum momentum is uh, mv i think man i hope i'm right uh mv mv i think so man i haven't done this for a while i'm gonna look this up uh if someone wants to confirm please do momentum formula mo man um, for new la slow mo momentum formula and change in velocity yeah so momentum is velocity uh mass times change in velocity right joe chicho is there a way to convert that into g-force um yeah i don't know how to do it i don't know the formula g-force there was a crash in the recent formula one uh, season where a driver crashed and experienced 51 g-force 51 times the force of gravity no it couldn't have been 51 that would crush that would make him like a pancake 51 g-force you sure about joe like when fighter jets fly and stuff i think human beings pass out at 5g or something many human beings pass out when they experience uh five times the force of gravity right he hit the barrier sideways at about 160 miles per hour 6g 51g no 51 g force is not 6g is it or ronnie are you saying people pass out of 6g i think pass out for fighter jets is 6g if you know joe if you're comfortable with that um with those numbers we can do a direct ratio comparison that's all we need to do so we don't need the formula we could just do a ratio comparison because we're gonna have uh what do we need we have cheryl's speed so we can convert kilometers per hour to miles per hour and then just do a ratio comparison right hello i'm a snake hey chicho i've been studying some math lately i've got a question let's say you were riding a motorcycle that goes 200 miles per hour and you were chasing a car that was going 160 miles per hour you are 1000 feet 34 meters away from the car how many seconds will it take to be parallel to the car yeah we can do this question how long a snake bring it up uh post it again as soon as we finish this discussion and then we can do it uh ronnie yeah i've uh, seen youtube videos where pilots pass out of 6g 6g cool cool 1g is about 22 miles per hour a second i think is it is it that low no i can't be that low is it that low 1g i think 51g was the force which people pressed the off button on their tv remote after they, after they stole the championship from lewis hamilton <laughs> funny 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 so if that i can't be 51g 51g would be insane first time chat what are we drawing we're calculating uh how hard someone will hit the ice if they if you had freezing rain come down so if they slip and if they're falling from a height of 1.5 meters 1.5 meters we calculated how fast they're going to hit the ground which is going to be 20 kilometers per hour or equivalent to uh, square root of 30 meters per second okay so now what we're going to do is figure out what their momentum is going to be which is going to be 80 kilometer 80 kilograms times the square root of 30. so 80 times the square root of 30. what is that 80 
80 times 30 square root. The momentum is going to be 438. 438. Now, what's the units of momentum? Uh, what's the units of momentum? Uh, Joe, it would have been later lateral G and not vertical G. Okay, which is uh, what fighter pilots experience. Okay, so the G is is uh, this way, not vertical. Is that what it, what it means? I don't know. I don't know the terminology on this stuff. Uh, what is momentum? Momentum unit units of momentum uh, is it force no momentum would be uh, oh God. momentum momentum what's uh oh, I can't believe this formula doesn't have the units come on come on anybody know what the units of momentum are it was instant as well lasted far less than one second wow 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 i just want the word for it it's not it's not joules is it no it can't be joules i'm just reading a website right now where oh come on unit si unit for mounting Oh, there's no word for it. Kilograms, uh, meters per second. Yeah, we know that, but is, isn't there a word for it? Kilograms, meters per second. Momentum unit. Unit. Why is this so difficult? SI unit. What is the unit of momentum what's it called kilogram kilogram meters per second that's all it's called there's no word for it kilogram meters per second okay kilogram meters per second that's what momentum would be all right because mass is kilograms velocity is meters per second kilogram meters per second Yeah, not a good experience. Uh, sliding on ice, flying up into the air, and boom, solid impact into the ground. And if there's stairs here, if this happens to you on stairs, just imagine walking down stairs. That's <laughs> not pretty big stairs. Walking down stairs, right? And you fly up into the air, come down. And just imagine, because this force is going to be distributed along your whole body if you hit it flat, which is a good thing to do, right? Except the head, protect the head. If you come down and hit one of these ledges, all that force on a little corner, ouch, ouch.